This video will demonstrate the functionality of a homemade ionization chamber, as well as the underlying principles. This simple experiment shows how ionization chambers are used to detect ionizing radiation such as gamma rays, alpha, and other charged particles. The radiation source used here is a Mericium-241, which can be found in most household smoke detectors. A Mericium-241 decays through alpha emission to Neptunium-237. The unstable nucleus throws off a particle, which consists of two neutrons and two protons, and moves at about 5% of the speed of light. This alpha particle travels through the air and ionizes the gas in the chamber. Our detector uses solid copper wire as the anode inside of an empty soup can. The charged ions are attracted to the anode wire which carries the collected charges out to the circuitry. Driven by the power of a 9 volt battery, the anode signal moves through two transistors in the Darlington configuration to multiply the signal so it can be read on the multimeter as the signal would be out of the detectable range of the multimeter without amplification. Alpha particles can only move through a few centimeters of air, so we will have to move our source close to the anode wire. Here, we see that moving the pliers close to the detector without a source, the multimeter reads zero millivolts. When the source is placed near the wire, we see a reading of 1.2 millivolts. This successfully demonstrates the functionality of our homemade detector. As a control, if the pliers were to accidentally touch the anode, as seen here, the readings would spike up drastically. Using a similar detector, Otto Frisch was able to detect fission in 1939. He noticed that, if a neutron beam was directed at a sample of uranium or thorium, the nucleus would split apart into two large chunks. These fission fragments and gamma rays that are produced in a fission event would ionize the gas in the detector he used. The same principles can be applied to this chamber using such sources.